Today we are taking a look at one of the best cameras for YouTube that no one is talking about. This is the camera that I personally use on all of my YouTube videos. It is small. It's 4K. It has a flip out screen, unlimited record time, crazy autofocus, tons of customization, amazing battery life, takes awesome photos, and is one of the world's smallest full frame cameras. Today, I'll be breaking it down and helping you decide if it's the right camera for you. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are talking about the Sony a7C. This is my personal camera of choice for YouTube videos and I've been using it for about two years. It's not the cheapest and it's technically not the best, but I find that it's the perfect tool for my workflow and I wanna share it with you guys. Let's start with the form factor. What first caught my eye about this camera is the size. It's one of the world's smallest full frame cameras. This compact size is really great for YouTubers with a diverse workflow. If you are someone who shoots in a studio setting like a home office, but also wants to take the camera out in a vlog type setting, this form factor is so great because it's lightweight and small. And one of the things I love about the form factor is the flip out screen. More and more of Sony's cameras are starting to include this, but at the time of this camera's release, it was one of the first to include the fully articulating screen. Prior to this camera, I was using the Sony a7 III as my main camera for YouTube. The a7 III is fantastic for client work where you're behind the camera, but for filming yourself for YouTube videos and content, it was a little challenging. The a7C addresses all of the issues that the a7 III had when it comes to content creation. It has the exact same sensor and specs as the a7 III, it's just in a more fitting body for content creation and YouTube. It also has unlimited record time. Now, while I love the compact size of this camera body, it does make it just a little bit harder to hold because the hand grip is not as big. I also do miss having the larger EVF for photography and shooting in harsher sunlight, but overall it's not that big of a compromise because the EVF on this camera is still pretty good. I also love that the SD card slot is on the side. This makes it a lot easier to access while leaving it on a tripod. One thing I do wish this camera had when it comes to form factor is a joystick because those can make it very easy to select your focus point. All right, let's talk about autofocus. This camera has Sony's incredible autofocus system. The face detect and eye detect work very well. I actually come from a background where I was shooting on Canon and Panasonic before I switched into the Sony ecosystem. And for a long time, I was shooting client work and videos in fully manual focus because I just couldn't trust the autofocus systems in those camera bodies. But being able to actually leverage the amazing autofocus that this camera offers is a game changer and it's really kind of shifted the way I go about creating content because I actually will rely on the autofocus, which is of course very handy when filming yourself. It's also great to be able to set different types of focus modes for different uses. This camera does not offer the product showcase mode like the ZVE 10 does, but pretty much what that mode is is just disabling the face detect and eye detect, which you can easily do in this camera. Something this camera has over the a7 III is that the face detect and eye detect are are still functioning when using HDMI out. So if you're connecting this to a monitor or to a computer for live streaming, you're still gonna get the full functionality of the face detect and eye detect. When it comes to audio, there's not much to say. The built-in audio of this camera, like most cameras, is subpar. You'll definitely want to put a mic on it or use a separate audio recording device, but that's also what I would recommend with most mirrorless cameras. Here's an example of the raw audio on this camera. Make sure to like this video, subscribe, and turn on notifications to stay up to date on the latest videos. As you can see, it doesn't sound quite as good as when I switch to my audio recorder, which makes sense because with an audio recorder, I'm able to get it closer to me and it's just better designed for this. It has better audio preamps. This camera can capture in 4K resolution in both 24 and 30 frames per second. 
It can also capture HD up to 120 frames per second. Unfortunately, this camera does not offer slow motion modes in 4K. That would be fantastic if it did, but that would be the one major drawback to this camera. But being able to take advantage of the full frame sensor, even in HD, still looks amazing. I think for most people's workflows, these specs will be totally fine. Battery life is one of the biggest advantages that this camera has. If you are coming from something like the A6000 line of cameras or something like the ZV-E10, then you will majorly appreciate the battery life on this camera. On average, the battery life in this camera lasts about three and a half more times than that of the ZV-E10. So for vlogging, shooting around the studio, doing live streams or podcasts, this will last a lot longer. Honestly, the battery life in this camera is one of the best that I've ever used and it's a major pro for this camera. This camera's low light capabilities are great. It's the same type of performance that we love and have come to expect from Sony full frame mirrorless cameras. It's not quite as crazy as the Sony a7S III, but it is exactly as good as the a7 III. The reason it matters is because if you're filming at night or in uncontrollable situations, it gives you some control back. You can do more with less and get shots that are usable. The low light, in my opinion, is a major win. Let's take a look at a low light example while I tell you about today's sponsor. For this example, we'll be using only the light coming from an iPhone screen, not the flashlight, the screen. VidIQ is a tool designed to boost your views. It helps you position your videos to get discovered. I don't know a ton about SEO or the algorithm, and thankfully with this tool, I don't have to. I can simply focus on creating awesome content and VidIQ does the rest. It gives me a checklist, tags, best time to post, strong keywords, and even video ideas. It takes all this information and delivers it in a way that I can easily understand and quickly apply to my videos. I end up spending less time in YouTube studio and more time in my studio, getting to do fun low light tests like this. So if you wanna check it out, you can use the link down in the description below. Make sure to use code creative to try out their boost plan, which is the plan that I use free for 30 days. All right, we've gone through quite a range of low light tests here but let's get back to the video. All right, let's talk stabilization. It doesn't have Sony's active stabilization, but it does have steady shot. I have found that I much prefer the stabilization in this camera over that of the ZV-E10. There is no crop when you turn on steady shot and the footage just looks a little bit more natural. And that's because steady shot engages an actual physical stabilization to the sensor in this camera, whereas active stabilization is purely digital. And while this is not going to replace a gimbal or anything like that, I do think that the stabilization looks pretty natural and will work decently well for handheld vlog shots. I love the Sony a7C as a webcam. It is so easy to use. With the latest firmware, you can simply plug it in via USB-C. It connects right away without any need for a capture card or additional software. One of the best features with this camera over something like the a7C is that you can utilize the face and eye detect while live streaming. Plus having the flip out screen makes it easy to monitor yourself. This camera takes 24 megapixel stills. This makes it a really good hybrid camera. The photo capabilities make it an awesome option for creating high quality thumbnails. Plus the flip out screen makes it easy to take pictures of yourself. I've used this camera for my own thumbnails. I've traveled with it. I've even shot people's weddings with this camera. I can confidently say that I love the photos that this produces. So the main reason this camera is special is because it has a full frame sensor. Let's break this down for a minute. The ZV-1 and even some mobile phones have a one inch sensor. The ZV-E10 has a crop sensor, which is a little bit bigger. And full frame sensors are even bigger than that. Bigger sensors mean more detail, depth, and light. 
Full frame sensors also allow access to full frame lenses, and these full frame lenses will often produce a better quality image. But one underrated feature of this camera when it comes to video is crop sensor mode. Traditionally, when you put a crop sensor lens onto a full frame body, you get this kind of black border vignette. But a cool feature that a lot of Sony cameras have is crop sensor mode, which allows you to put a crop sensor lens onto the full frame body and it activates this mode where it kind of crops into the frame a little bit and you don't have to deal with this border. But one tricky way that I actually use this is with my 20 millimeter 1.8 prime. When I enter in crop mode, it gives me like a little bit of a longer reach. And this is really helpful because I'm still recording at the full resolution. So it's as if I have two lens options, a 20 millimeter and something more like a 30 millimeter. It just makes a full frame prime lens a little bit more versatile. So who is this camera for? Well, I think it is for YouTubers who have a diverse workflow and who are looking to upgrade into full frame quality. If you are creating talking head content in the studio and also doing some videos where you go vlogging and you're also live streaming and you also might film a podcast, then this camera has got you pretty well covered. The superb image quality with the full frame sensor paired with long lasting battery life, all in a small form factor with a flip out screen and unlimited record time, make this a very strong option for YouTube videos. This is why it's my go-to camera. Oh, and let me mention the price tag. The Sony a7C, this camera, you can get right now brand new for around 1700. So all in all, this really is a great option if you're looking to get that pro level quality of a full frame sensor while still having crazy portability and a lot of great features packed into it. And you even get to save a little bit of money compared to some of the other options that are out there in the Sony ecosystem. Now, I know this has been a lot of talk about cameras, but I want you to know it's not all about gear and the best camera is the one you have on you. That's why I challenged myself to create a cinematic video on a $30 toy camera to come behind the scenes and see the results continue on to this video here. Thanks so much for watching and as always, stay creative. Peace.